Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and do these swatches look familiar? Well, they should. A long time ago, I tried to see if I could do a glue resist on yarn to create a pattern on a sock blank. And at the beginning of that video, I started with a proof of concept on some swatches that I quickly cranked on my uh, at home knitting machine. And I have a few of these tests left that still have some glue-based chevrons on them. So today, we are going to try to use this, spray them with some Wilton Color Mist sprays, and just have some fun and, I guess, leave no swatches behind. <laughs> I'm not planning on playing around with this technique on a full skein today, but see this as more of a proof of concept for another way to apply color when we have these glue-based resists. One other thing I would like to point out. Um, this was done with Knit Pick Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn, which is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. And I knit these flat blanks on one of my hand crank knitting machines, probably the smaller one, given the width of them. But I just wanted to point out the gauge here. Um, it's very, very loose, very airy. I get a lot of questions about swatches in my videos, and I would really love to provide a knit swatch at the end of every video. And some people say, um, just wind it on one of your little knitting machines, it'll take five minutes. But this, which is probably equivalent to size seven or eight knitting needles, isn't necessarily the best representation of what um, a sock yarn looks like when knit up on sock yarn sized needles. Now, I love to do lace projects with the yarn using larger sized needles, but you know, I think that for a proper swatch, this loose gauge with this yarn isn't really gonna cut it. The glue that I used on these little swatches uh, was just some Elmer's school glue that is washable. The washable nature of the glue is key because otherwise you're not going to ever get it out of the yarn and the yarn might have a crunchy feel to it. But we know you can rinse the glue out so this should work. Today we are going to use some Wilton Color Mist sprays. These are great for adding a light application of dye to yarn. If you want to use these, you definitely want to make sure that you have a wool-based yarn or protein-based. Um, and the yarn in these swatches is Knit Pick Stroll, which is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. The other elements that you need to dye yarn with food coloring are acid and heat. With heat, I plan to steam set it in a steamer basket later on, but as for the acid, these blanks are dry. I don't want to pre-soak them because the glue might start dissolving. So my plan is to spray these blanks with the food coloring and then to come in with a larger spray bottle of vinegar and then spray the acid on top after the food coloring has kind of soaked in. This could end up giving us some more spread on the blanks than we typically see with the color mist sprays, but I am really excited to see how this comes out. This is more of a proof of concept type situation. Um, and so if it works well, then it's in theory something we might try on a larger blank, even if that is not today. Shaking up the bottle. All right, we've got our color mist spray. Okay, so right now it looks like the coverage is pretty um, solid in that I see it go over the whole blank, but it does seem to me, and I don't know for 100% sure, that the glue might have some protein in it. It seemed to me like the glue absorbed some color last time, um, so there is that. But it looks like it's a little bit beaded on the surface, um, I think which will be really, really hard to show you guys, but I'll try. You can barely see the little dots of color and that is some of the color that looks like it hasn't like sunk into the yarn yet. It does almost look like on camera that there's some breaking but in person I see light and dark blue. I don't see any of that purplish color in person. On the second blank I am going to do the blue on this front side um, and maybe I went a tad bit heavier 
maybe I can still see some beading a little bit but hopefully that will sink in um, I'm not worrying about the edges this is more sort of our proof of concept if we had a larger blank it would be easier to sort of block it flat um, but after I think I'm gonna wait five minutes and then I will flip this one over to spray the reverse side. And I did add the glue on to this, to this side, like the way it's set up right now. So I'm not sure how much resist there is on the other side, but we'll see. Okay, in five minutes, I'm not sure how apparent this is to you guys on camera. You can kind of see where the glue is. You can kind of see that chevron. So whether or not the food coloring is sort of binding to the glue or what, I don't know, it's a little interesting to me. So I'm gonna flip this over and then I'll shift the camera. Right, I'm gonna flip this one over and, oh, interesting. So on the reverse side, it looks like the place where the color sunk in is where the glue is located. That is really interesting to me. Um, but I'm going to take my green and spray the reverse side and again I'm not worried about the curl very much here this is our this is a proof of concept what I am trying is not to press down a ton on the yarn but there we go I have added that color on there all right I'm now curious I'm not planning on spraying the reverse side of this one Let's look. Yep, you can see uh, that blue color where the glue is. So it does seem like, oh, and funny, you can see some pattern where the dye goes through. Um, you can see some of that glue color. But yeah, you can see that the dye does go through the blank where the holes are. And I think that that pattern, honestly, on the countertop is really cool. Will this food coloring come off my shower curtain? Maybe. <laughs> Usually I will put plastic wrap down on top of it, but I decided that I didn't care if I got some stains today. Um, and yeah, so I didn't put any plastic down. You know, now I do feel like I almost see like some purple in here. Does the blue have red in it? Uh-huh. We do have some red number three in the blue color mist. I added just some straight vinegar to this spray bottle. This is one that you can find at a lot of... Um, like home improvement stores. And now I am just going to spray. I did not wait any time on this one right now. Whoa. Did you see that color change? Whoa. Okay, so I just sprayed it with vinegar. Um, and I do want to spray the other side of this one. So maybe I will flip it again. Ooh! So very quickly, you can see some of that green, like on that glue. So I have no idea if spraying it is gonna like change the color penetration or anything like that. But I am going to let this sit now for goodness, uh, for I think maybe five minutes before we five to ten minutes before we go steam. And in the meantime. I'm going to start cleaning up the countertop. Goodness, is the vinegar, I mean, helping? I don't know if the acid itself is helping, but the liquid is surely helping. And so why not use it to just help me clean some of that up? But in general, I find that like a Lysol spray or something is helpful for getting some food coloring off of this surface. We waited about 10 minutes and I didn't put any plastic wrap on the surface today, but I did line the steamer basket with plastic wrap. And this is because of the glue, to be honest. Um, I don't feel a need to wrap up the blanks completely or anything like that, but I wanted to protect my pot from any glue that might dissolve during the steaming process. So anyway, I'm gonna go and steam this for 20 minutes on the stove top. The 20, 25, I forget which, but the time is up. I just turned off the heat. It's a little unclear to me right now if we have the chevron or what is happening with the glue. I do want to let it cool a 
fair amount before washing. Um, I mean, letting it cool will let the glue reharden, but we will wash in warm water. I just, uh, actually, let's see. The colors are pretty well set. It's not coming off my, my hand. Maybe let's go and start rinsing. Filling my wash basin with hot tap water, and I am going to pop these blanks straight in. I can feel the glue. It is a little bit soft, and it, the blank will stuck that plastic wrap I have placed down. So I'm really glad I had it. You can feel the glue. You can feel the glue in the blanks. And rinsing, it looks subtle. Like I sort of see, you can see like some V's in here. Let's look at this one. Um, I'm not sure. It looks like we're still gonna have some pastel color in those areas. So how much of the chevron we'll see remains to be seen. But I, so I'm rubbing it a bit right now. It will take some like rubbing and agitation. I want to be a little careful because I don't want to unravel these before we get a chance to look at them when they're dry. Um, you might end up wanting to do some washes after uh, you unravel the blanks as well. So in what I found before is that I washed it and I was able to unravel it even with some crunchy glue left and then an additional rinse helped get the rest of it out um, because when it's warm like it'll start to feel like flexible and you won't really feel the glue um, although you can see the glue. <laughs> um, but you know it will it will dissolve. Um, so I'm just going to give them a little attention. At some point I will uh, come in with some soap. But you can see our water is definitely getting cloudy and that is just from that glue dissolving, I think. Uh, but it is interest I am interested to see that the glue definitely did absorb some color. You can see some pattern from it, but it's not like as pure white as I had thought. But also like the glue isn't completely saturated in, um, the glue wasn't completely saturated like on the strands either. So all of this is going to be interesting. I'm interested to see like what the reverse is going to look like. Um, but you can definitely feel some of the globs. But anyway, I will periodically, I'm going to let the yarn soak in here for a little bit and then I'll come and I'll um, swap out the water. Actually, I'll, mm, after some hesitations and thought, what I'm going to do is I'm going to immediately swap out this water right here for some fresh warm tap water. Um, I can definitely feel some of that tacky glue in there right now. Um, and then I am going to let the yarn soak in the warm liquid for a while. Again, I don't, I'm afraid of... And I'll add more in a moment, but I'm afraid of unraveling these accidentally with too much agitation. Um, soaking won't do as much help as, say, washing and doing some agitation. Um, maybe I will go ahead and add some soap at this stage. Uh, I don't know if soap will help with the glue, but it won't hurt. <laughs> um, but anyway, I will do that a number of times and then... Uh, I will hang these up to dry, even if there's still a tiny bit of glue left. So next time you see me, we will be looking at the dry mini swatches. And I don't think you can see, but I noticed a dropped stitch happening, and so I'm really going to stop moving and touching them and carefully change up. Actually, this might be the final rinse, because I, I want to preserve what I can and look at it dry, um, and then we can do more rinsing once I have these in once I have intentionally, there you can kind of see the, a drop stitch, once I have intentionally unraveled them. Here is the problem. There's still a little bit of glue in our dried off blanks, but you really can't see our chevron pattern anymore because I think washing blocked it enough, it sort of moved the stitches within these loose stitches that you don't see that pattern anymore. Let me flip it over. If I flip it over, you can kind of see it a little better because some of the dye sort of soaked through where that glue was. 
So you can see that subtle chevron effect. Is this something that would create a pretty effect on yarn? Yeah. Is it a tiny bit more trouble than it's worth to use with the color mist sprays? No question. Uh, when I first did the glue resist, I questioned whether I should have maybe diluted the glue so that way it would go into soak into the fibers a little easier and give more penetration on the fibers and more protection on those areas itself. Uh, and so that's something that could help. But there is still more rinsing we need to do at this point. And so, yeah, I mean, I think that if you wanted to get some cool resist with the color mist sprays, you could use probably use a stencil or have something on top of the blank with some weight to it that would add a pattern there versus trying the glue resist. On our little swatch with two sides, you can see a little bit more of the pattern. I sprayed the blue here. On the other side, we sprayed the green. Now you can't really see the chevron on the wrong side, but you do see some hints of it from on the front where some of that green comes through. Again, I think that this is lovely, but the glue itself didn't really add a ton here. I am going to go ahead and unravel these blanks just off camera so we can see what the yarn looks like. I expect the yarn is going to be stunning and it's going to be pretty. Yes, it'll need a little more rinsing to get the rest of that glue out, but I don't think that the glue resists added anything to this colorway. Um, if we saw a pattern on the blank, then it could be cool to go and try it on a blank you want to leave intact to have that cool pattern or message or something come through. But ultimately, I think that most of the effect that we're going to see here today is similar to what we would see if we didn't have the glue there in the first place, which is less work, less washing at the end, so therefore easier all the way around to deal with. Now, does this mean that I don't want to play around more with resists? No, I definitely want to play more with resists and with these color mist sprays that have a bit of impact. And so we know that just like the yarn didn't really work to give like a pattern behind, but maybe something with a lighter spray might work well. So there's a lot of fun things that you can do both with the food coloring color mist sprays and potentially glue resist. Um, but it's again, when it comes to a lot of these techniques, it's about, is it worth the effort for you? Is it something that you would have fun doing? And if it's something that you would enjoy, then it's absolutely worth it. It just might not be something that I would go and do, go out of my way and do this exact kind of thing again. But all the more reason to try out on a swatch before an intact blank. One other thing is that the intact blank might give slightly different results because the gauge is tighter. And so therefore, when washing and everything, there is a little more resist between the stitches themselves and things are less likely to move around when you're like moving the blank. Uh, and so that could make a difference. But, you know, I'm, I'm meh on this overall uh, technique and the extra effort that goes into it, but I'm very glad that I gave it a shot. Here are the unraveled swatches. There's definitely still some points that are a tad bit rougher where you can see, even stretched out, you can still see some of that kink in there, that shape, uh, where we definitely will need to go and wash it again to remove the rest of that glue. It's definitely easier if I'm not worried about like the blank unraveling while I'm washing. But again, it's not that problematic to get the glue out of the yarn. Uh, it's effort, but not super, like, awful. <laughs> I love these alternating blue and green speckles that we got when we did both sides. But of course, just the blue and white also has a special place in my heart. I love, love, love using these color mist sprays on blanks of all types. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you find my willingness to experiment helpful, uh, please make sure you're subscribed and have notifications turned on so you never miss a new video. I like to take a little more risks so that way it makes it easier for all of you to plan out your own dyeing adventures at home. Are there any slightly more risky things you'd like to see me try out? Let me know in the comments. I love to try things for the first time on camera so we can all learn from my successes and failures.
If you would like to contribute to these videos on another level, go and check out the Chemnitz Patreon. Patreons get early access to one new dyeing video every month. They can get behind the scenes sneak peeks, shout outs, and more. You can find details on the Patreon page in the video description and iCard. Thank you so much for watching everyone.